Okay, um, hello, my name is Andy. Hey, Baskaran, Vishwanathan. And I'm Sean. And our team is called Discoverable Data. So we're going to talk about what our project is all about. Um, we want to set up a company, so here's in America, and we're going to come up with um, a list of possible cities for you to start up a company. So before we get into that, I'll give you a quick research back. What you did is we used three MacBook, no PC, no Linux. <laughs> three brain, it took us 11 days and 28 hours to do the work. And zero energy drink, back for you. <laughs> and here's, um, here's the graph of our work. So here's the interesting thing. You see all uh, the pattern of amount of work we put in. Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Tuesday. All the series in a class. And I'll start the class, nothing, almost nothing. And then at the end, it's a cram time. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's go back to work. This is um, collaboration tool. So we did um, Dropbox, Slack, GitHub, and Google Drive. Now, anybody know who's this guy? Bezos. Oh, who's this guy? He got it, Jeff Bezos. Yeah. He's an Amazon founder. So um, he wants to set up a company called Amazon Headquarters 2. So, and he had a requirement. So he need to, he need to um, <coughs> move the city with a population of at least one million people. And he must be close to airport by 45 minutes. And a city center must be less than 30 miles. And he planned to hire 50,000 workers. So we're going to do some competing and figure out how we're going to come up with that. So. OK. Um, I'm going to explain the data sources that we used. The variables that uh, we looked through and chose to be uh, important based on the requirements that Amazon is looking for is population data, labor force data, and some location data, proximity to airport. There were a few more requirements that we will be looking at in phase two of our project in the next go around. But uh, these were the most critical ones, so we focused on these. And you'll see we got census data, labor force data from Bureau of Labor and Statistics. And then uh, we needed to find the airports so that we can, and we ran a Google Maps API to calculate the distance from our city center to a major airport. And uh, so once we collected all the data, our first week was kind of just combing through data. Uh, the census data came in a CSV that was based on every city, village, town, in the country down to zero population. There was a few. Uh, we ended up filtering that to uh, cities greater than 100,000. Amazon is looking for one million or more, but uh, our uh, algorithm to look for where to place a city, uh, where which city to place a headquarters in, uh, we wanted it to be uh, more broadly applied than just to Amazon, so we looked at more cities than just they're looking for. Um, one of the biggest struggles was uh, matching of the data sets. Census was based on city, and labor force data was based on MSA, which is Metropolitan Statistical Area. So for DC, that includes Washington, DC, Baltimore, and uh, just the encompassing region. So I had to map the city to its corresponding MSA, but there was no key to do that, at least that I could find. But I used, we used a Google Map API to find the county for each city, and I found a mapping of county to MSA. So that took up like 50% of our time, even though it was a small portion of what we were actually trying to do. So that was the biggest str struggle. And the airport and, uh, Google Maps Distance Matrix API I touched on. So here's just like a look at the raw data, and you'll see 
this is a labor force data, and now even though this looks like a city, that's just a particular MSA that only encompasses one city. Um, but you can see how it doesn't match the formatting of the census data, so we had to do a lot of tweaking to that. And here you'll see the within our labor force data, we there's 22 major categories of occupations, and you can see some of them right there. And in our process, when we're looking at a company, we picking out which occupation types they would need to look for. Because we're not just looking for a general population of a labor force. If it's a life, physical, and social sciences uh, focused company, we want to look particularly at that occupation type and see if the labor force exists and is prevalent in that city. And this is just some of the airport data. Um, that was relatively easy to match up. We, once we had the Google Maps API, it did all the work for us. Um, and here's just looking at the top 15 cities in population. Um, the top 10 of these ended up being in our uh, search for Amazon, as you'll see later. And here is a pie chart of specifically within New York's MSA, the share of the total workforce that each occupation type has. And um, we used this to give a labor force score. So if we were looking for business and financial operations, if that was 8% nationally, but 16% in New York, we said they have an oversaturated share of business and financial operations employees. So that would be great for a company looking for that, not just total volume, but compared to the national average, they have more than their fair share. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to Baskaran as we enter our, the code portion of our section. Thank you. I mean, on the whole, um, Amazon has given us a blueprint what a company will look for it. These are the different criteria. If you look at this, you know, Amazon looking for 10 <coughs> criteria, they're saying that the way they said, looking for 1 million people, minimum 1 million. I 45 minutes from the city center, the airport, and they have 10 different classes. But uh, we have took uh, we have took only three class out of because of the shortage of the time. We are asking for you know, uh, what is the population. Everything is interaction. If, let's say if I want to start a new company, instead of in the standard test, I means standard 10 criteria, I am telling that okay, these are the options available for you. You choose whatever you want. Then I'll tell you which city is suit for you. So the first one is you no know, we. We have taken three inputs. One is it's everything user selectable. One is uh, saying that okay, a hey, how many population you want. Since the population we have is no number zero to uh, like a billion, so we uh, kind of you know restricted to four options: greater than or equal to 100,000 or uh, 25,000. Sorry, 25 uh, 200, uh, 25 uh, 250,000 and 500,000 and one million. Greater than or one million. We restricted to four. And using the labor force data the labor force data what we got from the website. They have 22 category of labor forces, each and every city they have it. So all 24, we are giving them input. You choose which one you want as a top priority. And now like, you know, we are kind of segregated into three. One is primary force, which labor force you're looking for as a primary. Second one, what is the secondary? The third one will give the, okay, I want these are the optional, whether you can go to zero optional or maximum remaining 20 optional, because we already chose one for primary, one for secondary. So remaining 20, you can choose whatever day you wanted. And on top of that, where what not Amazon is asking for, we introduced one more thing, you know, at the end, the user will be giving the input, hey, I want the weightage for population more. I want the weightage for you know, the labor force more. Or I want weightage for the you know, airport, close to airport more. Whatever they want, to give them input. Based on the logic, you know, by giving all this input, we are running the, our algorithm to figure it out. Hey, based on these inputs, this is the cities available for you to choose. That's so our end goal of this one. So for this, you know, uh, since we want to get the everything input from the user, everything from the user, we said, you no, know, we are we were finding a way of doing that. We you no, know, uh, even Ahmed helped me to uh, to find out. You no, know, is there any tool for us to use it and on? But what are the things we found out only in the uh, command line, but 
uh, fortunately we end up having this i5 widget which is the one allowing us to the for the user to give input in jupyter notebook so this i5 widget is the one where you no know, we used to the thing for a user input so here what we are saying in the beginning it's okay these are the which are you are loading and we are specifying the text size and what are the options the drop down the uh, interactive everything you are loading in the beginning these are the three things input uh, no uh, to display y and what uh, size of the uh, no uh, table I and mean the box for the label size everything we are specifying here and we are uh, when the moment run this we are asking the population either you want to give greater than or equal 100000 I mean 1 million whatever it is option i'm going to show lively after this slides over then i'm going with the uh, no primary option give me that which is the one with like computer and mathematical then it will give the list of things you can choose it because this 22 is a list predefined in the labor force so we created the list as an input for everybody to use choose it and the secondary when you go for the secondary the primary won't be there here because already we chosen as a primary important for you the as a company then here is a multiple remaining 20 will be in the optional list where you can choose either 1 by or 0 or all the 20 or what are the number you want it then it will give the value what i here i chose the sales and related it is the this is the input i gave this one then uh, these are all the no uh, choose the no way for your weightage for your no how we are going for the no population weight labor force weight and we are uh, no showing the, the based on input these are the data so that we can go ahead with the output what you want to show to the users so here this all the four options you can choose whatever you want it so right now we have chosen let's say 100000 change it to this one number change it to 50000 so the for the remaining calculation 50000 will be the sorry 500000 will be the input for this and here the same way all 22 are listed here whatever you want we can choose it here and this is secondary and the last one is optional you can choose like this so now these are the five i chosen as an input so this five i can see that here what the input for for us then the pop weightage you can choose number whatever you want is a number is 4 if you go here the number is 4 so like this this is for the weightage for the population and this is for the labor weightage here also is a no co uh, this box as well as you were the proximity to the airport weightage whatever you we can give it this so this is our final selection if you understand this will give you the final selection these are the you know uh, options available for us to do the you no know, uh, algorithm running and find out what is the final output based on that for uh, the ca calculation the algorithm purpose shawn will do this now um sorry and so you saw our data so now how we pick them together that my stick is justice so hit the math you want power like wow i don't read math so don't worry about it. i i show you the i will show you the formula in a language that you understand it's in a code so you will analyze the, um the overall score that means the best possible risk for the city so you will analyze the population labor force the population to city center population to airport and then you get the score and remember when you put on weight like how important the value is so that was times by so on and see with the code and the we run it so we ran the requirement for the amazon this is what we come up with the docker column that's the highest part uh that's the highest and that's so how we do to show that it's finished and here this is our top 10 that's so finished San Diego and San Antonio so let's compare with um other companies they run their own research so market market watch this is our what they come up with um Texas came up with um Alabama Michigan and Montreal and booking institution come up with this the code come up with that list so let's compare this is our data 
and Bloomberg, so on. So you can see pick a penis, but you have to see the pattern that is busting. So I guess maybe it might be um, either Boston or Dallas. But he will probably pick our data. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad, right? <laughs> and, uh, go. So we, we ran that for Amazon, but uh, like I said before, we wanted this to apply more broadly than just one company because we want more than one paycheck. <laughs> we, we don't just want it from Amazon. But So we came up with a, a hypothetical hypothetical company for ourselves to run a test on. So it's going to be an engineering consulting firm. So we want uh, our headquarters to be in the city with at least 250,000 people. Uh, the occupations we're looking for, architecture and engineering, computer and mathematical and management. And then here are weights, weighting population a little heavier, airport a little lighter. And. Uh, here are the results, and uh, I just wanted to fully explain this graph um, because we have our three uh, factors that make up the subscores, labor force scores going up, airport scores going across, and then the bigger the circle, the higher the population. And But I also wanted you to be able to see um, which cities did well, the overall score. So. The lighter the circle, the lower the overall score, and the darker, the better the overall score. And uh, the three cities I highlighted aren't necessarily the best, they're just interesting data points. Uh, San, San Diego did happen to the, be the best, and you can see it ranks highly in labor force score. It's close to a major airport, and it has a huge population. Uh, the data point right next to that, Oakland, that is similar in labor force, slightly lower in the airport score, but it ranked a lot worse than the overall because of how small the population is, and that was our most heavily weighted uh, factor. And San Jose is an interesting one because it was off the charts in the labor force score for these particular industries we're looking for, and it has a huge population as well, but it didn't do quite as well as uh, San Diego and a couple of the other cities because it is not close to a ma major airport. Or if it is close, there's a lot of traffic and it would take a lot of time. So here's an example where if you saw how highly San Jose ranked on here and then you realized airport isn't that important to me, you would change your conclusion on uh, which city is best for you. Um, and then here's our wish list. Um, I think we did a great job uh, evaluating what Amazon wants, but uh, there's a few more factors they were looking to. So here's our wish list for uh, phase two of our project. We want to look at, they, um, Amazon is looking for a headquarters with at least 500,000 square feet. So we were looking into the Zillow API, and we, uh, that's what we would use for that to find real, real estate for them, find potential actual locations for headquarters rather than just the city. We'd want to look at transportation data, how easy it is to get around. That's important for your employees and consumers as well. And we also want to look at community fit and cultural diversity. Um, I think I went through the biggest challenge, which was matching up the data sets, which had um, their key IDs were different. So matching those up was a huge challenge. Do you guys want to talk about what was challenging for you? That was it? OK. Any questions, comments? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Having done site location, the criteria you had was what they usually use. The only one I thought of that I didn't see is state tax incentives. 
That, that's that's a good one to look at. Yeah. Thank you. I've got a question because my two technicals are up here to answer that question real quick. So when you guys did waiting with Yahoo, right? Let's say this, the waiting was a two, right? And then you multiplied it by the population, right? Did you do? Is that how you did it? Oh, no. So one thing I may have skipped was we had population, which was a million, and labor force, uh, the factor I talked about, like regional share versus percentage share, and then also the airport was in minutes. We came up with a scoring system put, to put those all on a 0 to 10 scale, and then after weighting those, we uh, put the overall score on uh, scale of zero to 100. So that pretty much means with that little waiting feature that you had, that interactive part, if you kept all your criteria the same and whether you put it all to the left or all to the right, you should get the same results because they're all. Yeah, if you if you moved. Yeah, if each waiting was the same, but if you drag those sliders and you keep all the rest of the criteria, minimum population and uh, labor force industries you're looking for, it would change the results just on a simple slide. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, no, there is no point in getting the waiting. <laughs> you are <laughs> doing everything in the back end without, you know, just, to, just for namesake, you are getting the waiting is not going to help us. So waiting is important. That's why we, I said in the beginning, you know, these three options, if we, if we are asking the company, you tell me which one is important for you. You want the number of people or this labor forces or close to the airport. Mm -hmm. Based on your input, we'll tell you that these other cities are available for you. Uh, Christine, uh, could you ask a question? Um, just the census data. I'm looking at census data also, and there is labor information in there. So you mentioned like the challenges of using this other data set. Was there a reason that you didn't use the labor statistics? In we we looked through it, and uh, we wanted to go with the department, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, because that's what they focus on, and I believe that that just they do a better job of parsing that and. Um, I, I looked through the census labor data and I just preferred the other one. On top of that, and adding to this point, uh, no, uh, you're right, census also has the labor force, but we want to know uh, the same kind of, you know, the, we saw 22 categories. Each city, each state, whatever the thing, combination of that, we need to have them, let's say, even if the person, the, that labor force zero in that city, we want that data. In labor force, they have, in this, the census for these people, they have more, only one or two they have, it, not all 22. So we want to give them option to choose the category what they want from the labor force because they may have different thinking then, but anyway, all to get them grouped it as a different category in labor force, they already defined that category. So we took that as an option for them to choose more and you know, interactive way. I just want to touch on one thing. Like I said, uh, the labor force was in MSA, whereas the population was in cities. And when we first found that out, we thought it was a bug, but then we realized that it was a feature because you want the population of a city, but you're going to be pulling employees from everywhere within an hour. So we got the labor force from the commutable distance rather than just the city limits. <laughs> All right. Thanks again, guys. Thank you so much. One more group that's going to present, and they're going to present after lunch. Um, so we're going to see if we're going to save some time for each other. We need to have speed. On Let's behalf of all of our team members, no, thank you so much for all uh, Ahmed and all TS helping us to no, come to this club. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So we're going to take a 45 minute break, come back, and then we'll have another presentation. And with whatever time left, we'll set up some MySQL. Try. We'll try. <laughs> try. Try. Yeah, that was really impressive. Do you have time? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, we will have it.